So the 2021 Tory conference is here, with the unelected Brexit minister, Lord Gormless David Frost, rewriting history by saying that they always knew that the Brexit deal he and his carer Boris Johnson crafted and negotiated was never going to be fit for purpose if the EU insisted on actually implementing it. And despite Boris Johnson's government having also made a complete balls up of the pandemic response with one of the highest per capita death rates in the world, opinion polls show this ridiculous government are still ahead. Is that likely to change anytime soon? Let's take a closer look. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe and hit the bell for twice weekly notifications of new releases. I was watching Andrew Marr's trademark weak and unchallenging pre-conference interview with Boris Johnson and it was like watching an uncontrolled Trump light, except with Trump's outrageous claims they could be fact-checked for veracity. But when Johnson speaks, his bumbling, self-contradictory ramblings very rarely form enough of a coherent idea to be fact-checked. On the subject of fuel shortages at the pump, for example, Johnson rambled about shortages of truck drivers in Poland, America and China. True, there is a shortage in those countries, but it hasn't impacted the supply chain at all unlike in the UK. There are no fuel shortages or empty supermarket shelves in any of those countries, and nor are there in Northern Ireland, making Brexit the most obvious and logical explanation for the fuel crisis. Johnson, however, claimed that it was due to a particular problem to do with demand in this country, but later in the same interview said that the issue at the forecourts is fundamentally one of supply. Contradictory explanations, but both avoiding the obvious cause Brexit. Johnson claimed that the recent national insurance rise would hit banks the hardest. Harder than working people? Harder than the low paid? Even the banking industry couldn't provide an explanation for that claim, which has no basis in fact whatsoever. Johnson elsewhere in the interview claimed that wages are rising for low paid workers, but the government's own Office for National Statistics said median earnings have been unchanged for the past year, meaning a real terms cut with inflation rates rising rapidly. And that's before the recent national insurance hike, which will lower take-home pay even further. But it seems to make no difference to the voting public when Johnson's lies are called out. They seem to find him amusing or even a sympathetic figure, despite his thousands of lies, his serial adultery and a string of illegitimate offspring, his historical sexist and racist comments, his corrupt appointment of donors and cronies to powerful and well-paid public positions. All this is forgiven. The rest of Europe sees him as a joke. Joe Biden patronises and flagrantly disrespects him, and yet Johnson emerges from all this with a higher approval rating than Keir Starmer. At the Labour Party conference, Keir Starmer dismissed Johnson as trivial, and while I couldn't agree more, I think the public already realised that our Prime Minister is a clown, a serial liar, a man with no convictions who jumped on the Brexit bandwagon purely to further his own career. But they just don't seem to mind. So, is this situation likely to change anytime soon? We've had two years of bluster, lies, incompetence, excess COVID deaths and a disastrous Brexit. We have a welfare system that's broken, a care system that's broken, a legal system that's broken, a police force in crisis, the army being called up to relieve the supply chain crisis, no fuel at the pumps, empty supermarket shelves, labour shortages across a raft of industries, falling real terms wages and benefits, the biggest tax burden in 50 years. But Johnson is arguing at the Tory conference that Britain's economy is simply going through a post-Brexit period of adjustment after leaving the EU, while admitting at the same time that supply chain problems and shortages in fuel and food could be with us until Christmas. And come Christmas, he'll probably say Easter, and come Easter, it'll be... Well, the point is, it's what Johnson does. Rather than admit to fundamental problems and solving them, he actually just kicks the can down the road. And the fundamental problem here 
is the loss of freedom of movement rights within Europe and the government's post-Brexit highly restrictive immigration policy. The Tories are trying to sell this as some sort of Brexit gain, that somehow immigrant drivers were pushing wages down for the native British drivers, or even taking their jobs and leaving them unemployed. By getting rid of these unwelcome immigrants, the government line goes, we'll push wage rates up and get British workers clamouring to be HGV drivers. But the fact is, Brits aren't clamouring to be HGV drivers. Whatever the wage rates, your average Brit would rather have a job where they can sleep at home most nights, where they work as part of a team, and where rules governing their conduct are not quite so strictly monitored and imposed. The wealthiest countries in the world have always relied on foreign workers to come in and do jobs that indigenous workers didn't want to do. By getting rid of freedom of movement and resisting calls to reverse this decision, the Johnson government has pulled the British economy over into the slow lane and ensured that we won't be one of the wealthiest countries in the world for very much longer. As we learn to live with Covid, the camouflage the pandemic has provided for this government's incompetence and corruption will be removed. In addition, as the universal credit cuts bite, the national insurance hike hits take-home pay for red wall voters, inflation continues to spiral, supply chain disruption carries on into 2022, the Northern Ireland situation remains a hot potato, and as public opinion continues to shift on Brexit, particularly after Brexit import regulations are finally and eventually imposed next year, then maybe, just maybe, the electorate will start to look at the alternatives. And that brings us to the other side of this electoral problem. Scotland, and the dominant SNP aside, will the English and Welsh electorate ever warm to Keir Starmer, who seems to be failing to land any punches on Boris Johnson? And are the Green Party and Lib Dems having any impact at all against this government? Without some sort of electoral pact or progressive alliance, it's difficult to see this Tory government suffering a reversal in fortunes that would lead to the sort of 10% plus swing away from the Tories that would see them lose power at the next election. Sorry to end with such a bleak conclusion, but the solution is right in front of his face should Keir Starmer ever accept that Labour, by themselves, will most likely be out of power forever.